So I will start with a question, um, just a technical question about the visual essays that we are seeing here, because it's, a, it's an exhibition of just visual essays and that's not something that you do a lot. So a little bit on how you collaboratively develop these kind of statement-based yeah. well, Thank you for essays. a very kind introduction and also for, you know, just, uh, I'm, I'm very happy also to see a lot of my friends and ex-students. So I'm really grateful to the gallery to be uh, the so fantastic, as Claudia said, it's the seventh time I exhibit, I have a solo show at Galerie Nordenhake, and this time we decided uh, to open up uh, the exhibition also a little bit with my collaborative projects and we included uh, a film which is not mine film over there uh, but it's a film um, uh, the title is sharing the lachlan which is a film by elder ray woods and his collaborator bernard sullivan with whom i collaborated for the sydney biennial and the story of the lachlan river that we work together uh, is, uh, are here behind me. Um, the, like, the question was about visual essays. I have developed uh, during class, let's say 20 years, uh, a body of work that are what I call, draw, <coughs> when I draw and write at the same time, I think it's a tradition of, uh, that architects use but I develop it in some kind of uh, story. So there is always every uh, sort of philosophical essay that you read here is grounded in particular uh, land, let's say. This is Lachlan River, and uh, these, the drawings over there are about uh, the referendum for water in Slovenia. And uh, just to tell you, at the dark behind you, there are two diagrams uh, which I call, which are not visual essays, but they talk in another way how ideas and places are connected. So they, they are like, <coughs> maybe like mind maps, but sort of different from stories that you see uh, like running around the, uh, around the room. Um, I would like to say something about, uh, perhaps about the Sydney Biennial, just to, because we are sitting here. Uh, Sydney Biennial 2022, so last year, the uh, artistic, uh, the, like uh, the main curator, Jose Roca, uh, with whom I worked before, invited me uh, to work there to develop a, a project they were, Originally, uh, they thought to invite me to Australia, but it was time of COVID, so I couldn't come. So he proposed that I, he said, why don't you do a work about a river in Slovenia? And uh, I come from Slovenia, so it, I was completely somehow surprised because I've never done a work in Slovenia or about Slovenia. And at the time, it was something fantastic for me happened we had a referendum for water in Slovenia, this was 2021, when uh, the, the, like, uh, the story is like this. In Sl Slovenia in 2016, uh, put the, uh, into the constitution of the state right to water. So it became constitutional right. But then five years later, the right-wing government uh, turned it around and uh, they actually passed a law in the parliament that would uh, make this protected water or land where protected, where with protected areas uh, would become endangered. And the civil society uh, organized a referendum which was overwhelmingly won uh, by, by people who voted, so uh, it was everyone voted for water, not for, uh, like, uh, not for, for the law which was passed at the time. So what we have learned very quickly is that people who voted for the law saw the water as an object. And people who voted for, uh, for water 
uh, not to be endangered, uh, saw the water or the river as a subject, which means uh, as a living being. And uh, a beautiful transition happened here. So suddenly, uh, people uh, understood, people who voted for water, they understood they are not owners of rivers, they are caretakers of the rivers. So actually, all this exhibition is about this transition, uh, about owners to caretakers, and probably we'll talk more about it. And also what it means, uh, because I believe our, the biggest uh, challenge we have today is actually to transform the relationship with, we have with nature. Yes. So this transition from um, thinking about the human right to have access to water, which was uh, the topic of the, mm. the law that was passing, and then transitioning into people of Slovenia understanding that um, the rights of nature as a subject. Would, and this is also the topic here with the, um, the protection of Uncle Ray Woods uh, and the protection that they offer to the area yeah. that is now being dried out by the construction of the dam yeah. and the construction of the dam serving the agriculture um, upstream, yeah. basically. Uh, so, so in a way, uh, when we started, but let me just first, uh, there is something which is very simple, a simple, simple statement, but uh, I, I think it's very good to tell it that, uh, for instance, I'm not, uh, I have a son, but I'm not owner of my son. I'm his caretaker. Mm -hmm. So also I'm not owner of my friends. Uh, I'm their caretaker. I think that's important when you see that when you understand that the river is a living being, you also say I'm not owner of this living being. I am reverse caretaker. So that's a switch how we understand uh, our relationship today uh, with the living world. And uh, it was fantastic when we, I started to collaborate with Uncle Ray Woods. Uh, it was all over Zoom because I couldn't travel to Australia. And then we had a lot of conversations. And again, what was so beautiful was that we spoke the same language. I was afraid that you know he would, that we wouldn't come together to to develop a narrative to or to, to understand each other, and we ended up trusting each other. Really, it was beautiful, and also I, I understood that the, at this moment that environmentalists and indigenous people, uh, many times today they talk very similar things, and this personally gives me hope for the future. So actually that we can uh, pass the knowledge or think in long term, like he, he would always say, whatever we do uh, in our uh, First Nation, we think seven generations ahead. So this is also what we discussed in, in the class, design for the living world, where all design and uh, working in the city is really uh, like on a fast past. So everything has to be done very fast. But actually, today we understand that we have to think very long term, slowly. Yeah, and build long term relationships. Yeah. There is a, a very particular topic that comes out in all of the works that is also connecting this transition towards understanding nature as a personhood, uh, that it needs to be protected by law, but needs to have a personhood or needs to be represented somehow in the court of law in order to be protected. And the narration of who speaks for the entity, who speaks for the river, who speaks for the water, who speaks for the nature, um, is a huge topic today in environmental law. Mm. And this idea of the speaker speaking for, so Uncle Ray Wood speaking for the land, speaking for mother, for his mother, um, the rights of the river protected by different speakers, uh, and us in the Association of Floating speaking for the basin. But also in the visual essay, you have many, many, many more speakers. <coughs> yeah. So maybe you can... Yeah, this, uh, this is the work which is uh, titled uh, the, um, the, the, the Life of the Lachlan River. Lachlan River is situated in New South Wales in Australia. Uh, in, it's a, actually an amazing river. It doesn't end in the sea. It ends in the wetland, and 
it has it lives in some kind like in, in cycles I would say so um, like it uh, it floods every seven years and uh, there are periods of drought so it has a very particular temperament if I can say so and uh, the the dam which is built halfway in the river there was a plan to enlarge it for 10 meters and uh, like a Uncle Ray Woods and his uh, First Nation people from his country, they, they raised the voice uh, to stop the, they want to stop the raising of the wall. So actually both works, the, the film and the drawings are uh, agents to, to get, let people know what's happening there. And uh, this is, yesterday we talked with Gilly, what was super interesting is that he talked uh, as a caretaker for the river and for the country where river runs through uh, in the parliament of New South Wales. So he's, he represented the river in the parliament. And uh, at the end, here we constructed a story together where everyone who is involved in this change is speaking. It's, uh, it's the bird, it's the tree, the tree says, I'm Thursday. So after I, I'm waiting for seven years, if I wait another year, I will die. And uh, then mother nature talks here. And at the end also gradually uh, community talks and the settlers talk. But at the, in the last drawing, he would say, but actually it is good that uh, we understand that when we, uh, when we uh, look, we see and when we uh, like listen, we hear. So we have to learn to trust each other. And uh, actually, there is no need for us to talk for, for another human being if we would listen and uh, hear each other. Uh, so that's uh, his And there beauty. would be no need to speak for nature yeah. if we would yeah. learn to listen for nature in a yeah. different way. Yeah. So actually, you know, it just sounds like very far away, gradually uh, country. In the future. Yeah, uh, but actually it's uh, when you look at the, the, the basin case study, the drawings in the back room, mm. uh, they, they, we, we are talking about the same problematics, if you want, you know. Uh, do we, uh, when we protect the, the, the land uh, against, let's say, development or whatever, to uh, to, to change the relationship, how we understand our relationship with nature, we also enter this, the dialogue with, uh, with nature. So basically we talk for nature in the case of association of the floating or, or the, the basin. Uh, they talk or you talk for, for nature there, you talk for the wetland mm -hmm. that would need to be there, uh, but the, at the same time, uh, this is, uh, I think, the biggest struggle. The biggest struggle for me, as I said before, is for us to change uh, our relationship with nature. Uh, not only the egalitarian relationship, but actually uh, to, to develop uh, another kind of relationship. relationship yeah. I think another interesting aspect that Uncle Ray Woods mentions in the video as well, and it appears also in the work with floating, is the idea that, um, yeah, we cannot go back to how nature was before. So the idea of learning to speak or learning to listen differently, learning to, is a very future forward thinking idea. And they're not looking, even in the struggle with the how to divert the water, uh, in that area, they're not looking to reverse back or to cut the relationship with the agriculture that has settled mm -hmm. itself upstream, but learning to compromise with what has come there, mm -hmm. not to try and return to some pristine idea of nature the way it was before. Mm -hmm. And so changing this relationship is not an idea of changing it back into something, but finding a different relationship. Yeah. What, we, what we also talked uh, is that it's important to get a new agreement, to get to a new agreement. So actually it doesn't make uh, sense to, to make more and more laws and to regulate more and more, uh, but it's very important to come forward, uh, to talk with 
with, let's say, with the other and to, uh, to make agreements that uh, are not uh, human-centered. So actually that's a big struggle, right? Yeah. Yeah. To decenter the human. Um, I think we can also open up to see if there are any questions um, in the room, maybe from people who have had the time to look at the work. If not, then I can continue. <laughs> yes, please. How long did it take to write all of these essays? Sorry? How long did all of this work take you? Uh, how long? This, uh, actually, I was invited to uh, uh, to make work for the Sydney Biennale in, uh, in 2021. Uh, so I, I think it's half a year work for these drawings. And uh, the, the also it's about what was also very interesting, the idea of collaboration with Uncle Ray Woods uh, was we at the end started really to trust each other and we formed a real collaboration, which means that the film that uh, the gallery so generously agreed to show complement the drawings, and the drawings complement the video. For us, it was very important that they stand together. Um, the, the drawings at the back, there, there, is, there are three diagrammatic drawings, diagrams called the world in the age of stories, and uh, I developed this project at the Headlands uh, Center for the Arts in, uh, let's say, in 2020. I was invited there for a residency, with, which gave me a big space, so I suddenly started to make big diagrams. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was just developing the, the storytelling for two months, and I completed the drawings in uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia. And of course, uh, the new, very new work is the Basin case study on coexistence, where I talk about the Basin, how I encountered it. I'm talking about the, what you call the floating, mm. uh, the, what we also in the class called the Floating University Berlin in 2018, when I worked there with my students. And uh, we formed a very close uh, relationship with, with nature there, uh, which at the time was facilitated by Raumlabor and with a beautiful architecture that was placed there, but it also is easy to remove. And then uh, after this period, which probably, I'm not so sure, lasted two years, the, the idea of renewing knowledge production on the basis of understanding nature in a different way. Uh, there came a very beautiful project for me, which is called uh, Climate Care. And uh, like Gili and Rosario Talevia are a big part of it. Yeah. And uh, really when you come, come there and you are a part of the, the workshops that are uh, organized there, you really enter the, uh, nature culture relationship you now together. Mm. As uh, you said yesterday, you said, uh, where nature culture was always one thing before, let's say, modernism, or even you, you could say before Renaissance, and then they were uh, put apart, and now mm. these days we have to put them together, not only because of the uh, climate change, but also, I always say, also because of the decline of the social state. Yeah. So we are somehow forced to, to change uh, how we work. But to follow what we were saying before and quoting from Ray, um, we don't put it back together the same way that it was before. That's true. But we put it back together yeah. in a different way. Yeah. And this is where narration and storytelling is such an essential tool yeah. No, yeah. for building these kind of new stories or forward yeah. Going yeah, yesterday story. we talked that actually it's, it's not enough just to be critical these days. It's really, it's the time to tell uh, stories about trying to figure out new way uh, for our, uh, like for the communities we live in. Yeah. Uh, so very, uh, what I say is I, we are not society of owners anymore. We are transitioning into society of caretakers. So perhaps uh, if you would agree with me there, you will find some 
uh, good ideas uh, <laughs> to think about when you look at the drawings. But this is also at the heart of many of your projects, right? The, how we treat land distribution, land ownership, yeah. and laws that surround the land. Yeah. And working with this in so many different locations around the world, um, have you seen in your experience that the law is somehow a story that mm -hmm. repeats itself? Or at least I can imagine that it is a story that somewhat repeats itself more or less oh, the same yeah. with local what variations. I, what, I, what I really believe is that the best way is to work, uh, to figure out these stories is to work on a, a particular land, like uh, I, again, go back to the basin. Mm. And uh, because when you work together with students, we always said it's not enough just to read from books you have to get your fingers dirty. Mm. So basically you have to get involved in the real situation and uh, you, you can really make uh, attempt to make new agreements when you are uh, like working on a particular land, I would say. I call it the base in the land. So the, the narrative here uh, in the drawings in the back room is how to figure this out, uh, how we can, you know, not only how we can work with nature, but also how uh, that we are still bound to talk, uh, speak for the basin, or mm. we have we still have to speak for the basin. Yeah, uh, we are not. Now. Yeah, we are not on equal terms with nature yet. We are. Th this the caretaking position is to speak for. But I think it's really interesting how the relationship between speaking for, narrating of, is the beginning of an action in many of your collaborations with local communities. So the beginning of the action mm -hmm. is the narration, telling the story in a different way. And then whatever the community picks up the story and what they manage to make with it can grow into an agreement mm -hmm. and can grow into a change or a transformation of the conditions of a site. Mm -hmm. And this is also connects to what we're trying to do at Floating yeah. as well, very strongly. Yeah. And so narration becomes really not just um, a descriptive tool, but a tool for transformation. Exactly. In a way. Yeah. And I think yeah. including all of these speakers has become a different way to build diversity into the narration and mm -hmm. so on. So have you had in these kind of all these localities and all these communities, have you found that the stories um, are, transform are able to be transformed in collaboration? Yes, yeah. I, I think that's uh, really the most important thing, mm -hmm. like, uh, but not that you would come, let, let's say with uh, students, we also worked on the projects where we uh, like started to work with local community, but then we also understood uh, that uh, we have to withdraw from the process. Mm -hmm. And the students, when we had a very successful project in Soweto, it's called the Soweto project, and uh, what we did there, when we came back to Hamburg, I remember students explained to other students why the project was successful, and they said, well, um, it, it was fantastic, we, it, we were successful because we withdrew from the project. So the community took over, uh, which was very interesting for, uh, for other students that are still very bound on object. At the time we were thinking in the class very much about relational object, which means somehow to, to get the weight of the object off your shoulders. Mm. Yeah. I think there was two uh, more questions. You, you were mentioning the, the trust, you know, which you need to build during uh, creating a project or guiding into the work. Uh, could you explain or tell us a bit more about the methodologies that you work with? Because they are obviously very much kind of uh, informal, also decolonializing uh, the way of uh, uh, the, the relationships in the space is created and also then produced? Um, like, uh, not sure uh, if this is the right answer, but uh, in the class we developed a few methodologies. I think, uh, like my students would say, 
uh, for the new practice, we, knew to, we need a new vocabulary. It's very simple. So we struggled a lot to get rid of standardized knowledge. Uh, this is what I learned at the university. This is still what students learn at the universities because uh, it's the easiest way to, to teach, to explain a topic when explaining what is black and what is white and right or wrong. No? Uh, so to get out of this uh, dialogic uh, or progressive relationship or linear relationship, you have to develop a new vocabulary. And this is also why we, we uh, encountered such a lot of new vocabularies everywhere. So many universities and arti artist community and also designer community. So a lot of people are developing a new vocabulary. Uh, and uh, it's all this, the production of new knowledge, new knowledge production. I think that's very important. Uh, for my class, I'm very proud on methodologies and I can just name a few. One is uh, relational object, which you mentioned already. Then the ritual of transition. And I would like also to point that the basin here has two ritual of transitions here. here. First, it's the time of architecture settling in the landscape. And the second one is basically a climate care a relationship with nature. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, for instance, also the performative action, I don't know, it's just like a, maybe. Social agreement. So the social agreement is very important uh, to not being, uh, how do you say, weighted down by objects, but to actually to focus on the relationship with people. So you think more about uh, people. And uh, when you think, see an object in the space, you see the relationship that it produces, not so much what it represents, for instance. Now I'm talking like a professor now. <laughs> then maybe um, we talk about the last thing, in which is ritual, which is incredibly important uh, for your work and also for the projects that you are. Mm -hmm. um, so what is a ritual for you, and how do you kind of express it also through the visual essays? Yeah. Well, the ritual, uh, we all know, Actually, I like to give examples. Like when we worked on this, the drawing series with, with uh, Ray Woods, he would explain the importance of why, why the dam or the river is not good. He would say, rivers are like veins in your body. So in, if in your vein there is a clock, you die. So if there is a dam on the river, the river is dying slowly. Uh, so actually this was, uh, th this is an example how to tell the story. Yeah. And what, what was the? About the ritual. The ritual, yeah. The ritual here, uh, the ritual is very important because uh, I take, I, I like uh, anthropology as well. I'm, uh, an artist and architect, but I, I, many times I find out that uh, the ideas that I think about are close to anthropology as well. And I, I think also the vocabulary that we, the, with the students develop at Harvard are close uh, to anthropology when I look back at what we have put together, but we never consciously looked at anthropology. It's just like anthropology looks into the relationship between uh, people and like uh, communities and so on. So it's focused on, uh, on the social. And uh, in the basic case study, the drawings in the back room, they talk about, as I mentioned before, about two rituals, ritual of transition. Uh, from the land, first part is from the land that is a wild uh, landscape, a no man's land, in the middle of Berlin. And then people started to appear and they uh, thought very consciously how to inhabit this land. And uh, that's, uh, for me, beautiful architecture that Raumlabor put together. Uh, but also not, of course, it was not about uh, the objects or what I call here the airy things. Uh, but it was about producing new knowledge. So that was the first uh, ritual of transition to come uh, to a new understanding of relationship between people and nature. So all the workshops that I saw there, 
Uh, I was just there with my students also to be a part of it in 2018, so a long time ago. Uh, this is how we understood it as a ritual transi of transition. And the second part is the climate care project. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you can say something about it, um, this, the second ritual. Uh, climate Care is a research festival where we kind of collect um, themes and issues that are uh, burning on the site. Um, we respond to the ecosystem on the site and see what it needs and how it develops um, and what kind of relationship we can have with it um, and how that relationship can be narrated, re-narrated um, and told uh, far and wide. Uh, yeah, and so we curate a program around these topics. And we use the festival as a research moment for the association to advance um, what it wants to do on the site uh, and how it wants to defend the site from other speculative forces that are happening in the city uh, that might work against opening up and sharing it and taking care of it, uh, rather more towards developing it and um, and, so you, and closing it anew. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you actually also speak for the amazing, no? That's, uh, that's yeah. actually a new, what they call agency. Like the, the agency, the land has also an agency, but we people also have the agency. Yes. So that one challenge is actually to accept that the land is a living being, but also that it has its own agency as uh, other living beings. So that's a story, you know? Yeah and that those stories will come if we listen yes a bit more carefully <laughs> yeah thank you yeah <laughs> thank you very thank much. you